I know they're a close group as far as on the religion side. I know they take care of their own. They help each other out in times of trouble. They don't drink, don't smoke, they don't go out. They just sit in the house all day from what I hear. Wherever we travel, we see the temples, and I think it's a good, beautiful church, very, very nice people. Okay. They don't seem very happy. I'm sure they are, but uh, the, the image they gave to me is a, it's a very sad people. I think they have lots of wives, if I'm not mistaken. And they have, again, their own community. They, they raise their kids, they get married, and I think if a wife gets too old, they get another one, I'm not sure. <laughs> but yes, I, do, I think they do believe in polygamy. I don't think they worship anybody, as far as I know. But they don't believe in a god or a, a figure like that. I believe that they help out everybody. They seem very caring, like they care about all people and all walks of life. They have some strict rules as far as what they can drink, like carbonated drinks or caffeinated drinks, I think it was actually. Um, and that's about all I know about Mormons. Most of them live in Salt Lake, I believe, or are from Salt Lake City, Utah. Maybe it's all true, or maybe it's all wrong, I don't know. About 60 years ago, half of all the world's Mormons lived in this one underpopulated state. Fleeing here in the 1840s from a nation intolerant or suspicious of their religious differences, they survived, then flourished. While some misunderstandings and confusion remain even today, the church gradually gained a measure of acceptance from mainstream America. In the 1960s, membership growth took off. Church missionaries could be found on the streets of most major cities of the world, and church buildings dotted the globe. Today, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is seen as a world religion, over 13 million strong and growing fast. And to the media, it is still as fascinating as it was when it was a small, persecuted group. Hi, I'm Steve Young. It was my third great-grandfather, Brigham Young, who stood near this spot in 1847, stuck his cane into the dry ground and said, here we will build a temple to our God. You know, I wonder sometimes what he would think today of this place and the church he led for nearly half a century. In Brigham's day, the few thousand church members that existed were either already in Utah territory or making plans to come here. Tens of thousands of converts crossed the plains by wagon and handcart until the coming of the railroad in 1869. Mormons are clearly defined by their history. It was the isolation and their reliance on each other for survival that forged an independence of character that was resolute in the face of adversity, yet charitable and generous in times of need. Today, only 14% of the world's Mormons live in Utah. Less than half live in the United States. Mormons today are Germans and Japanese, Africans and Argentinians. They are successful businessmen, bankers, and teachers. They are also dirt farmers in struggling, developing economies, students hoping for a decent education, young parents wanting to make life better for their children. All over the world, of every nationality, ethnic origin, language, culture, and economic background. In the next few minutes, we want to show you some things that we hope will dispel some myths about us, because the myths are still out there, alive and well. Brigham Young built these large houses, beautifully preserved here on South Temple Street. When people see them, they often ask about polygamy. So let's dispel myth number one. Mormons discontinued the practice of polygamy over 100 years ago. It bothers us to see those who practice polygamy today, referred to as Mormons or Mormon fundamentalists. If someone is practicing polygamy, you can be certain they are not a Mormon. I wish to state categorically that this church has nothing whatever to do with those practicing polygamy. They are not members of this church. Most of them have never been members. All right, myth number two. Mormons are a close-knit group only interested in taking care of themselves. The fact is, the church provides global humanitarian and welfare programs to help the needy that are unlike anything else in the world. 
and they aren't just for Mormons. These people are not Latter-day Saints. They're recent immigrants, Muslims, Catholics, Hindus, and others. They're working here at the Humanitarian Service Center operated by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. While here, they'll learn basic English at free classes and receive job training to help them get on their own feet. Meanwhile, the clothes they are sorting will be bundled into relief packages for needy communities all over the world. Since the mid-1980s, our humanitarian efforts have reached over 163 countries across the globe. Wherever there are lives uprooted by hurricanes or earthquakes, civil unrest or basic economic hardship, we are often among the first to arrive and the last to leave. We also have a number of ongoing efforts, including clean water projects, the training of health care providers, and providing wheelchairs to those who need them. What you are seeing here is just a fraction of the church's welfare program a system of farms, canneries, and stores that grow, prepare, and distribute food to the needy wherever there is a need. And not a cent of it comes from government taxes. To pay for the program, church members go without food for two meals one day a month and donate the savings. Quite simply, there is nothing like it anywhere. I'm deeply grateful that as a church we are extending humanitarian aid when there is sore distress. We have done a great deal and have blessed the lives of many people who are not of our faith, but who also are children of our Father. We will continue to do so for as long as we have the means. Hi, I'm Charlene Hawks. I'd like to discuss myth number three, Mormons are not Christian. This is a tough one for us to understand because we are Christian to our core. Maybe some of it comes from the word Mormon, which is a nickname, not a title. You won't offend most of us by calling us Mormons. Just know that while it's okay to refer to members of the church that way, we don't like to hear Mormon church. Why? Because the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the correct name, and it includes the name of the Savior, that's important to us. We love the Bible. We try to follow the example of Jesus Christ in the way we deal with others. But we're different from other Christian faiths in important ways. We use other scriptures, like the Book of Mormon, as a companion to the Bible. We believe in modern prophets and that God still speaks to man. We build temples, just as in biblical times, as well as thousands of chapels. And we believe the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is a restoration of the ancient Church of Christ from 2,000 years ago. We're also very family-centered, but more than that, we believe that families can be together for eternity. It tends to make us want to try that much harder to make marriages work. While we, too, have divorces and broken homes, they are fewer than in other parts of society. The family is ordained of God. Marriage between man and woman is essential to His eternal plan. Children are entitled to birth within the bonds of matrimony and to be reared by a father and a mother who honor marital vows with complete fidelity. Part of that commitment to family goes back to earlier generations. We believe that even those who have passed on can be linked to us in an eternal family chain. So you'll find many Mormons very interested in researching our family trees. In fact, the largest family history library in the world is across the street from Temple Square. It's open to everyone, and people come from around the world to use the facilities here. The church also sponsors the largest collection of free family history resources in the world on its website, familysearch.org, which includes over one billion searchable names. My faith, like those of millions of other members of the church, is the most important thing in my life. It brings meaning and purpose to life and gives practical answers to the challenges we all face daily. I hope this gives you a better understanding of who we are and who we are not. Towering above all mankind stands Jesus the Christ, the King of glory, the unblemished Messiah, the Lord Emmanuel. He is our King, our Lord, our Master, the living Christ who stands on the right hand of His Father. He lives, He lives, resplendent and wonderful, the living Son of the living God.